All right, good evening. It's our five o'clock service time and I uh, just wanted to open the word with you here tonight and uh, thankful for you joining us. Hopefully you're, you're at home and uh, taking these times, these opportunities, church fam, to just, um, just stop what you're doing. It's probably good, you know, just to set the kids down. I know we have other things that they can do, but, um, you know, you're going to get distracted easily. Try not to go through, um, you know, try not to figure out all your emails now. I have over probably 8,000 emails on my phone alone that now would not be the time for me to start deleting them. So don't, don't well, obviously me, because I'm here, but don't, don't try to do all that. Just try to focus in, and um, it's just a unique time to where we're going to have to really give attention to. This isn't, you're watching on the screen, so it's also a reminder that, you know, I don't know about you, but even when I'm with my kids and they're watching a movie or something, we're watching a movie together, many times I'll still have my phone open, you know, um, doing other things. So just a reminder that um, this is this is still the Lord's day. Let's let's give him, when we open the word of God, that we, we give the, the word of God due diligence, okay? And I uh, want to encourage you that way. Also, be in touch with one another. Stay um be sure to get your, your uh, point person of contact so that they can reach out to Brother Eric, maybe send him a text, um, and then let them know that you're the person of contact. Brother Eric will be contacting you, and they're going to be in contact with you throughout the week. So if you get a little bothered by him, uh, just know that uh, uh, now you know how Brother Courtney feels. So he's, uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, no. But uh, just, just be in contact uh, one with another. Be praying for each other. Um, I know that we need to continue to pray for Marjorie. Pray for others that have uh, uh, not feeling well, and uh, some of the kiddos are have fever and just not feeling so good. It, again, remember that the flu season is still around right now too, so fever is still present as well. We're just on a little bit of alert. Maybe your neighbor got sick or sneezed. Don't you know? Freak out. You know, go over there and be a blessing to them. Obviously, keep your distance, but um, you know, just just a reminder about those things too. But we do want to be vigilant and. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're checking out, Just check with your doctor, stay in touch with them. And, uh, and then also, if I can encourage you this way, stay in the book, you know, spend time praying. We're doing 7 a.m., 7 p.m. prayer time with our families or individually, just taking that time to pray at 7 a.m., 7 p.m. or 7 p.m., praying for the church specifically. Please don't forsake that time. Have that time to pray together as a family. It doesn't always have to be at those times. We're just setting those times because it's letting you know we need to pray for our church. So if you haven't prayed for the church today, do so, would you? And then we'll uh, continue to do that. Um, look forward to um, a Wednesday night. We're gonna post a uh, Wednesday night sermon up on YouTube as well. And we may have a link. We're probably gonna have links on Facebook for all this too so that you can just click. Also our website uh, should have links that connect to YouTube as well. And so uh, getting all that out as well. All right. Okay, very good. Let's um, let's start off in prayer, and then I'm just going to open the Word, and uh, we'll want to give you a challenge here from the Word of God here tonight. Father, I thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity, again, to preach the Word. I pray, God, that you just give me clarity of thought now. I pray, God, that you'd also fill me with your Spirit again. I need you, Lord. And, uh, Lord, I pray that uh, thank you for our services this morning. Thank you for those that uh, joined in. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for our church family, and I pray that you just have your watch care over them. Help us not to forsake this time, uh, but spend the time uh, growing and learning in Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, that you would just uh, help us now. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you open your Bibles to uh, Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, it's the first book of the New Testament. By the way, next week we're going to be back in Ecclesiastes. Just this week, I just want to give you a challenge from the book of Matthew. For our church, uh, specifically regarding um, uh, all that's going on around us, but I don't want to spend so much time talking about that as much as I, I want to take advantage. That's the main thing here. I want to, I want to uh, even Peter says, and we'll see this later on, how he stirs you up in remembrance and just kind of stirs you up. And I want to stir you up here today to, to challenge you in some different areas of what, what God wants to do through these times that uh, that's going on, especially all that's happening right now. So, um, but then next Sunday, we'll be back in Ecclesiastes in our study there. Looking forward to that. I love the book of Ecclesiastes. Hope you've learned some things. I've learned um, and I continue to learn a lot more from Solomon in his old age there as he gives us the eternal word of God. And I'm thankful for that. All right. Matthew 26 and, um, and starting in verse 47. 
47 is just going to give us the information that we're seeking here. Um, and then we're going to, um, we're going to break it down into verse 56 is really what we're going to focus on here today. All right. So Matthew 26, the Bible says in verse 47, and while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the 12 came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. So you can imagine right now what's happening is that this is the betrayal of, of Jesus by Judas. Judas is betraying Jesus here. And, um, and so we pick up the scene here. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? I always find that interesting right there, by the way, that Jesus even knew exactly what Judas was doing and still called him friend. And uh, still took the time to understand that uh, it's almost like Jesus was saying to him, uh, Boy, it's just not too late. And yet uh, it, was, it was late for Judas, wasn't it? Uh, the devil had already uh, entered into him. But he said, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into this, his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that, that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. Look at verse 56 here. But all this was done that the scripture scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. As I mentioned, you know, this is a time even in, in the passage that Jesus had prepared the people for. Uh, he had prepared them. Uh, he prepared his, his church. He prepared the disciples for specifically that he was going to be taken, he was going to be, he was going to be crucified, he was going to die, and he was going to uh, raise up from the, uh, from the grave three days and three nights later. He had told them time and time again, and it's kind of one of those things that someone can tell you something about it uh, so long, but the reality is that until you go through it, then it starts to click. I remember when I first became pastor, um, I, you know, even growing up in ministry, but I was a youth pastor, and then I was an assistant pastor. And there's a certain part of you that goes, man, yeah, I can do this. You know, I can pastor. And I think God puts that in us. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there ought to be a desire to, to be a pastor. That, that desire ought to be there um, if, if, uh, as God puts it in us. And we ought to push towards that. But there's also this sense like, yeah, I'm going to, there, there's, there's a sense of, yeah, I can do that. And there's also a, how do I put it? Um, you become a little naive when it comes to it as well, because you don't know the impact of all that entails, the lives, the responsibilities. See, like when I was an assistant pastor, I'd tell people um, if they had a complaint, I'd say, oh, you know what? Well, let's just talk to the pastor about that. And that was easy. And then I would go home and I'd sleep and everything would be okay. Um, but when I became a pastor, I would say, oh, I'd hear a complaint and I'd go, oh, okay. I guess the buck stops here. So, you know, I'd take it to the Lord. That's about it. But then if I just go home and sleep, that'd be a whole nother thing. Uh, I'd be wide awake thinking, well, I wonder if I could do this and this and this and this. And, and, uh, and ultimately, I just had to realize that I need to be God's man. And, uh, but you, you grow through that. It takes time to develop that because, and it's still, it's still a growing point, by the way. But it's one of those things where I could have had a whole slew of pastors in front of me saying, this is what to expect when you become a pastor. This is what's going to happen. This is going to happen and this is going to happen. They can probably break down each scenario to me and tell me when this happens, you need to do this. Probably like if I was in Bible college and someone said, hey, you're going to learn how to pastor during a pandemic. I don't think anyone ever would say that because they didn't foresee that coming. So, um, so it's one of those things where, um, you know, you can tell me all about it, but until you're in it, that's when you learn about it. 
And sometimes that's when it registers. And I think for the disciples in a lot of ways, that Jesus had told them, he prepared them, but the, the reality is that um, uh, he had prepared them, but until they were in it, that's when it became real to them. That's when it started happening, that this, this is happening. And uh, even to the point that as Judas betrayed Jesus, even all the disciples were, even at the, 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 the Lord's Supper in the upper room, they were, they were also trying to figure out, well, who is the one that was going to betray Jesus? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? They're all trying to figure out. Even when, when Jesus gave them a sign and who it was that was going to betray him, they still didn't know it was Judas. And so um, they went on and Judas betrayed Jesus. And even at that point where Jesus was essentially coming to the point where he was watching and praying. And we remember that what preceded this betrayal was Jesus was in the garden praying. When he was praying, he was praying as great, uh, as great drops of blood, as sweat were coming down off of him. And as Jesus was praying, he prayed this uh, prayer. Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. In other words, he was saying, I don't want to drink of this cup, Lord, but I want to do your will far above me going through the crucifixion. I, I may not want to face this, God. I don't want to take up the, no, not the crucifixion, but the sin cup that Jesus was going to partake of. He was the holy son of God that was going to take the sin of the world all on him on the cross and bear that, bear that, that sin and that shame where you and I should have bore that shame. It was heavy on Jesus. And yet he said this, the will of the father, my love for the father is so much more important to me and his will is so much more important than what, what I want to do. And so from that, Jesus despised the shame, the shame, endured the cross for us and the shame and the suffering of all that. I mean, good grief. He had a crown of thorns plated upon him. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. His, his flesh was ripped from his skin uh, or from his back. His, um, uh, he was beaten. His beard was plucked. He was bruised. Um, they, they even uh, uh, pierced him uh, later on with a, uh, um, uh, with a spear. They nailed his hands to the cross and nailed his feet to the cross. Uh, man, they, they did so much. They made Jesus bear his own cross as well. Then not only that, but they, they stripped him naked to do so. I mean, the shame, the shame that our Savior went through, but yet because he loves the Father and his will be done above his own will. This is the scenario that's preceding all this. And even though he has submitted himself to the Father, you still have disciples that haven't submitted themselves to Jesus. Uh, I want you to see that. He submitted himself to the Heavenly Father, but the disciples still haven't submitted, even though Jesus had told them time and time again. And I don't want to say Jesus was exasperated as I kind of expressed on my face right there, but but Jesus had told them several times already that this is what to expect. And this is what's going to happen. He even told John how he'd die. He told Peter how he would die. And Peter later on in 2 Peter would show us from that his time was to come soon that he was gonna that he was gonna die. But at that moment, until they were in it, they didn't know. They wouldn't, they wouldn't know it until they were in it. Even to the point that when Jesus was betrayed. Well, here comes Peter. He pulls out the sword of one of the uh, one of the soldiers, and he smote off his ear. And Jesus took the ear of Malchus and healed Malchus right there, a man that was going to take him away, and probably a man that would later on witness the the beating of Jesus Christ. And he would hear he would hear the 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 pain and suffering of our Savior only because that same Savior, not long before that even just healed him and put that ear back on. And he told Peter to put the sword away. Why? Because he was submitted to the will of the Father. He was continuing to endure what he was called to do. Not only that, but as, as Jesus was taken away, he let them be reminded about a couple things. I was with you this whole time. He could have taken me then. Basically this, what changed? It wasn't that Jesus was questioning them as to say, well, what changed? You guys could have jailed me a long time ago. 
what he was doing was trying to prove that this was the fulfillment of the scriptures of how things would be. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing. He was revealing to these that were standing there that knew the scriptures, that knew the prophecy of what was going to take place and what Jesus even had told his disciples of what was going to take place. It's almost like he looked at them and said, see, this had to be done this way so that the scriptures must be fulfilled. There was no other way that it was going to be done. And then not only that, he ends off in verse 56 with, um, with a reminder about the scriptures of the prophets that it might be fulfilled. There is a period there, and then right after that it says, Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Forsook him and fled. So we have Jesus going through all of this, and yet it had to be fulfilled even by the scripture that the disciples, they would all turn away from Jesus. Now we're not just dealing with the 12 disciples here. We're not just dealing with Judas and Peter and James and John and going through all the, the disciples. We're also dealing with those that had followed Jesus. In fact, outside of Mary, his mother, Mary, um, the other Mary, excuse me, and also John, who stood at the foot of the cross, uh, because that we know that they were there because Jesus looked down and saw his mother and saw the disciple whom he loved and said, oh, uh, woman, behold thy son. And he was letting him know that, that from now on that John would be in charge of, of Mary, his mother, take care of her. But outside of that, all those had forsook him. Not only that, we're not going to take the time, but the, the story continues on in Matthew 26 there of, of Peter's denial of Jesus Christ. Peter, I mean... We're talking about we're talking about one Peter that had the faith to step out of the boat and walk on water, as mentioned even this morning. And then we even had Peter, who was uh, uh, one that was there at the Mount of Transfiguration when he saw Jesus and Moses and Elijah, and he saw them at the Mount of Transfiguration. What a sight to behold! We're, we're not talking about he's the same one that saw all this, and then all of a sudden he's like, "No, I'm not with him." You have some disciples here that, well, they all forsook him and fled. I want to challenge you just with this, that there's a lot of times, and specifically just ranging around what God wants us to do with this time right now, because we need to be advantageous of what the time has called for us. Um, just to not bury the lead, but to get it out there for us is that now is not the time to forsake the Lord. Even though we've read in, in Scripture that at the, the end times, the perilous times would come, we know that there's, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and various things before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not just signs of the coming of the Lord. It's just the signs of the time. Peter and Paul wrote about it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that, that Jesus was coming again. But, boy, we're going to see... That truth is going to be set aside and people are going to fall after fables. And, and we saw that perils and diseases and wars and everything else like that. And boy, are we not in that right now? We're seeing a lot of that. I'm not saying we're in tribulation. Understand as far as the, the, the period of time of tribulation, uh, because we believe in we believe in the rapture and then the tribulation. That might be for another revelation study that we need to do. Just to be clear as a church that we 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 believe that the rapture takes place and then the tribulation so we'll never see the tribulation uh first but we still will go through our own if you will tribulation and we'll go through these this time where there's a falling away from truth and that people are falling away from it and we may hear about it and we may read about it and we may have been reading about wars and rumors of wars and then all of a sudden 2001 took place 9 11 and we had terrorists take out buildings and it, it became very real. I was just thinking about it the other day. I was reading uh, uh, the other day, and I was, I, was, I, I was in my garage specifically, and I was looking up, and I saw, um, I, I was thinking about our American flag, and I thought about during this time how so many people are out and about, and I remember after 9-11 how the American flag was all over the place in the United States. Everyone started to get in. It didn't matter which political party. It didn't matter what they were up to. It didn't matter. They were, they were, everyone was all American at that point. I mean, I remember even, even uh, I was in Oklahoma City at the time when it took place, uh, when 9-11 took place. And when I got back to Vallejo, it, it seemed like even the gang said, you not, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, everyone was, was behind uh, uh, America. They were all in as being citizens of these United States. And uh, I thought, you know, there's a sense of, of where that, you know, 
It became real to us in 9-11. Now we're sitting here and, you know, my soul, it doesn't take much. I, you drive anywhere in San Diego County right now, and there still may be cars out, but it doesn't seem like as many as it usually is. Um, just the interchange going from 78 East to 15 South is quite an interchange. And I'm telling you, I have no problems getting on the, the 15 South. And, and uh, that's right, you know you're from California because you preceded every freeway by saying the word the. So anyway, um, but uh, you know, the thing is now we're in it and we have all these things taking place and we're going, whoa, this is happening right now. We've heard about this, we've read about this. So just as the disciples heard about it from Jesus, and I'm not trying to compare the death of Jesus to this pandemic or anything else. Listen, the pandemic may be secondary to someone that's battling cancer right now. Uh, let's just face it. You know, it, it may be secondary to someone that's trying to pay their light bill this month. And I, well, Pastor, that's okay because they said that they aren't going to, utilities aren't going to shut us off. And I went, okay, that's great. But we still got to pay the bill. I went by um, and picked up mail the other day and I told my family, I said, you know what? What the coronavirus hasn't stopped? Bills. So I'll stop bills. We still have bills to pay. And so these things still continue and those things may proceed. So I'm not just trying to, but since we're in this, we can be advantageous now and, and take advantage, full advantage of what God has been teaching us as a church, as believers who trust his word, that we, we trust his word. Now, now it's time to apply that which we've learned. Instead of forsaking all and fleeing, now's the time to step up and grow. Now's the time to do something about it. Now's not the time to flee. Now's not the time to deny Christ. Now's the time to, to step up and go through with what God has for us. We see here that as the disciples took this route, there's this initial shock of all that's going on, even to the, the reaction. You remember sitting on a, uh, on a, uh, a, a hospital bed or a, an examination table and um, your doctor's there, your feet are dangling at the end and they move this, the stairs away from you a little bit and they take out a little tool and they tap it on your knee and on, right at your knee and they want to check to see how your reflex is, you know? It's funny to me that Peter's reflex when all this was going on was to take a sword out and chop off a guy's ear. Uh, I don't think he was going for his ear, but he was a fisherman, so who knows what he was aiming at at the point. But the, the deal is that his reaction, his reflex went to defend Jesus. Why? Well, Peter already said that. I'll die with you, Jesus. I'll go with you even unto the grave. And then he denies Jesus three times. Yes. Because he kind of missed that point. You know, his reaction at first was to was to um, was to strike. And then his reaction after that was to flee. And then after that was deny. I'm telling you, there's some initial reactions right now with all that's going on. Don't 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 get discouraged in the way that you first reacted to all this going on, if it's negative, even if it's positive, because you may go through different, it, tomorrow's a new day, you may, I mean, you may, uh, you know, think differently about this tomorrow of all that's going on. But the reality is that if we stay in touch with the Lord, our, our reaction ought to stay to this, that I have to take full advantage of what God's trying to do in my life now. But maybe your reaction to a lot of this stuff was, just like I mentioned 9-11, people's reactions was, let's put flags up. Let's say the Pledge of Allegiance again. Let's let's sing the Star Spangled Banner. If 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 I'm just saying, I'm gonna be controversial right here on YouTube. Once you believe it on YouTube, people are controversial. Um, is that um, that if Colin Kaepernick was playing the first football game back in after 9/11, um, I don't think he'd be received too well in September of 2001 think is when they got the games back going again for NFL. And I'm just saying the reaction for people was to be patriotic. The, the point is though that over time we kind of get relaxed as well. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but our reactions may have not been the best of this. There may be fear. There may be kind of, you know, uncertainty. And certainly those things are real. It's not to say that we walk around. It's not, I'm just here to tell you, pastor, don't walk around going, Oh, I don't 
fear this thing. Bless God, I don't get, well, good grief. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't help that our governor got up the other day and said 56% of all fam or of all Californians mm -hmm. will get diagnosed with COVID-19. Well, that didn't take a, you know, a mathematician to figure out that that means half of my family, there's six of us, that means three of them are likely to be diagnosed with COVID-19 based upon his numbers that he gave us, okay? But man, I could sit there and wring my hands out. My reaction would be, you know what? Shut down the house, you know, uh, put up boards on the wall, you know, windows and don't let anyone, if they knock on the door, you know, just let them hear, you know, and then they can run away, you know, um, you know, a hideout. We were joking around about the other day that, you know, if we get to um, a doomsday prep, uh, you know, a cabin somewhere, you know. The, the thing is though, that we, we may have different reactions, but I think I've said this before, I've stolen this from, I've stolen this, but, uh, this illustration from Jim Berg, I've given him credit, so I guess I haven't stolen it from him, but Jim Berg from Changed Into His Image, when he said that the contents of what's inside a tea bag, um, you know they're in there, but not until it's applied to hot water do you know what it's producing at that point. And then when you put, put it in a hot water, that's, that's when you get the tea. That's when you truly get it. And so when you've been put on hot water, just like the disciples here, you may be responding to it a little bit different. Okay, we need to move on because I'm dragging that part out. Is this, that even though your initial reaction, like Peter, could be anger, could be striking, it could be, it could be forsaking and fleeing, and it could be denying Christ. Here's the deal. That's what I want to challenge you with. Now is the time in all that's going on. Let's just look at it this way. God's, through this, the United States of America, no Baptist preacher got up, no preacher got up and said, you know, we ought to close all the bars and the nightclubs. They've been saying that, but no one was going to listen to them. They just thought, wow, silly old preacher. It's funny that, well, the, the counties and the states started closing down bars and nightclubs first. They started closing those things down. So once you think it, it doesn't mean that there's still no alcohol floating around. I mean, good grief. Just let you in on a little family secret. That's how my grandpa did <laughs> after uh, after third grade when he dropped out of uh, elementary school in third grade. Not only did he work cotton fields, but he ran he ran moonshine in Alabama. So anyway, uh, uh, but the thing is though that it's not to say alcohol's still not around, but the thing. It's, it's interesting. I mean, we've got bars and nightclubs now. What, what are we talking about? Well, we got stadiums closed. We got sporting events closed down. Um, we have basically our, our society, and myself included, and I love sports. I'm not here to bash all that and everything else like that. Bars and stuff like that. You know, bashing, not bars, no. Um, <laughs> the thing is that we're so entertainment driven that the, even the joke around here when I moved here to San Diego was that San Diego has amazing fans for their sport team. There's not a lot of them, but they're amazing fans for their sports teams <laughs> because they just don't show up to the games either. Because why? And it's sunny here all the time. You know, why would you sit inside a stadium when you can go to the beach or you can go to the mountains and you can go hiking, you can go biking. I mean, you, man, good grief. There's so many other things to do than just sit in the stadium. I mean, San Diego Padres have probably, it's been even labeled one of the number one, at least top three most beautiful stadiums in the United States for baseball, baseball stadiums. Just beautiful, just a gorgeous. Man, I've sat in that stadium behind home plate and I've looked out at sun, you know, I've been in shorts and a t-shirt, um, you know, when it's supposed to be cooler weather everywhere else and I'm sitting there enjoying it. And I'm looking out at the skyscape, uh, uh, skyscape of San Diego, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place, but people are, we're so entertainment driven. Listen, all that has closed down, and now we're kind of like, well, what do we do now? Uh, well, don't worry, Pastor, we still have Disney Plus, Netflix, and Hulu. I know, we, we still have all that as well. But even then, that runs its course too. Not like you just sit there all day. Some people make it a, a challenge for them to sit there all day. You, you just can't. Um, the thing is that um, I, in my neighborhood, I'm watching kids ride bikes. 
I'm watching people walking their dogs. I didn't even know they had dogs. I felt bad for the dog. Dog looked like I hadn't got a haircut in weeks. Man, no, I'm kidding. But you know, the thing is that um, you know they're walking their dog. They're they're outside. People are talking to each other. Neighbors we didn't even know. My wife and I were doing a workout. We were running around our um, around our our neighborhood, and it's 400 meters around our neighborhood. So it's just one track miles or one one track uh, one lap of a, of a track. And uh, so one of our neighbors saw us and yelled out, hey, we have weights if you want to use them. I didn't even know, I didn't even know the neighbor's name. <laughs> and uh, I never spoke to him. Actually, I'd never seen them before. So anyway, um, it's just one of those things where uh, people are talking to each other. All this entertainment has been taken from us where we are so entertainment driven as, as a people. And it's, it's kind of cleansing. We need this time. And sometimes... We know we can be disciplined in it. And I'm not picking, I'm not sending the whole message in about entertainment. I'm just saying that we're not disciplined in it sometimes. And sometimes it's taken from us. And now we have to figure out what to do. What's our reaction? You know, there's all types of jokes about, you know, things going on. We're all going to be stuck at home. And, you know, or, you know, I, people, people now know what homeschooling is like. You know, I, you know, I know Miss Michelle, she's like, all right, man, it's on. People now know what homeschooling is all about. What we've been doing this whole time, not just sitting around and everything else like that. But the thing is that, um, that when it, when all this is happening, it's, it's almost like a joke that, um, you know, even with the kids being homeschooled now, close, schools closed, they're saying, yeah, you know, one of my kids, uh, you know, this homeschool thing's not working out. One kid got suspended, the other one got expelled, you know, and they're not going anywhere, you know? The thing is this, though, that the reaction is um, for us that we can take the full advantage. Look at how much time are you getting with your family right now that you normally wouldn't get. Okay, we're with the kids, but we're going to go to Disneyland. I love Disneyland, by the way, and we have a lot of good time at Disneyland. But, you know, you can get lost in that, too. I love going to sporting. I went to sporting events with my sons, and we've gone to uh, even a, a couple of years, about a year ago or so. We went to Stanford UCLA game and uh, watched football, and that was great. But I mean, I didn't do a whole lot of talking to my boys during that whole time either. It's it's just forcing us, taking advantage of of growing. God wants us to grow through this. Okay, Let, let's get back on track here. What Peter was doing here was Peter and the disciples. They had all fled. And they went through, and you know the story. I'm just going to, just bear with me. They, you know the story of where Peter went from this point on. Boy, he denied Christ. He, he cursed and denied Christ. He had done so much. We, we pick on Peter so much, but it's God's using it as an example for us because many of us can associate with Peter that we'd be similar to that. Peter, even later on, when he went fishing and he took disciples with him, that's just a reminder that even, even your reactions will draw people to you and they'll go with you. If they're weak enough, they'll, they'll, you know what, I'm just going to go. So be careful how you react to these things that are going on. Be careful what you say sometimes. The negativity or even taking things lightly too much. I mean, it, people, you know, we joke around about it. I like to joke, but if I joke around too much about this, man, I'll tell you, this is a serious thing that's going on. And we have friends that are nurses that are involved in all this. And I'm telling you, and even Levy, you know, she's out at a nursing facility and, and a nursing care facility and all these things that... You know, people are faced with this stuff, and it's a reality, and, and we can kind of, you know, miss the point here, but, you know, how we respond to these things, and, and Peter went out, and he took disciples with him, and he went fishing, and then there he was, Jesus comes up on the shore, and they saw Jesus on the shore, and, <gasps> you know, Peter was naked, he jumped into the water. You know, and then he comes back up there, you imagine him, you know, putting on his shirt, oh, hey, Jesus, we knew it was you, <laughs> good to see you, you know. He's the same one that saw that Jesus, this was, by the way, that was, that, that part of the story was after he'd already seen that the tomb was empty. There's so much uncertainty in this going on. The disciples were feeling that. We may be feeling that uncertainty, but don't respond and don't react the way that Peter, Peter could tell us through the eternal word of God right now, he's telling us, don't react that way. Get close to Jesus. Draw nigh to him, and he'll draw nigh to you. Through this time, I just want to give you a challenge. We'll be done here. Is this? I want to challenge you to to focus more on your spiritual life in in these coming weeks. You have more time than ever to stop and pray. You have more time than ever to read your Bible. Now I say that, and I feel like I've been busier than I have been 
and I felt like I was already busy, but it feels busier than ever. But you know what it comes down to is that as I get busier, I learn to tighten my schedule down. Because one thing in my box that no one should be able to touch is my time with Jesus. And listen, if, if you take this time to develop a time of relationship with Christ, spend time in the Word, spend time in prayer, call your family, get a hold of others, strengthen them, encourage somebody else, but develop your walk with Christ. Don't strike out and start lashing out. It's kind of funny, and we can use that example, because I think right away when they started closing churches down, I saw pastors and people go, bless God, they're, they're coming after us. Oh. Well, I mean, they shut bars down, for heaven's sakes. They shut casinos down in Las Vegas for 30 days. Now, they probably need to you know, shut those things down and sanitize them for the next six to eight months, but you now I'm telling you, for the next 30 days, they shut casinos down. That means they're not generating income. That means Nevada turns back into a salted wasteland. If you've ever been to Nevada, that's all it is, okay? Desert and wasteland, all right? And, uh, you know, the thing is that, that um, you know, people kind of struck at it instead of, God, what are you trying to do right now at this time? Because church family, I just want to make it clear to you, just like Mordecai told Esther, you were brought for such a time as this. Don't forsake me. God's given you this time in your life right now to do something for him to draw an idea and develop that relationship. Work on areas, if you will, continue on. Work on areas that you need to grow in, in your life. It's a great opportunity to say, God, I just need to start focusing now. Write those things down, write those areas down, write your failures down, write your successes down. Say, okay, I failed here today, but I need to work on this. Just like we spoke about this morning, that well-rounded life, adding to our faith, virtue and knowledge and temperance and, and, and such on, you know, that we continue to, to develop our growth in the Lord because God wants to do big things in our life if we allow him to. Don't go back. Don't go back to doing the old way. Sometimes even right now you're like, well, um, you know, well now my life was already struggling. Now we don't have churches often. And now we don't have that. Well, we, we still have services. We still have, we still have videos. It may not be the same, but don't let that just mess up your whole life and your whole schedule. And by the way, I'm that person. I'm that person. I, I just be real with you. I hate when my schedule has changed. Uh, I have to really, I've learned over time to submit myself to the sovereignty of God. And really, that's what it comes down to is when my schedule got changed or gets changed, I, I man, there's a reaction to me like, no, we're going to do it this way and this time and this thing and this is what we're doing right now, right here. And that's how I am. It. I'm telling you, I had to learn over time just to submit to God and say, God, I have a lot of plans. This is how I pray every morning. God, I have a lot of plans today, but help me to be submitted to your sovereign plan. Because he's God. He can do whatever he wants. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? That means that, it, let me just be clear. If the Lord, if, the Lord uh, if I got into an accident that day and, and got into a car accident, I'm telling you, the Lord knew about that car accident. I didn't. That's why it's called an accident. But I'm telling you, I have to be submitted. I can't sit there and go, well, now I'm going to miss work. Now I'm going to miss, uh, you know. We get all bent out of shape about stuff instead of, God, what are you trying to do through this? Submitting that to God, believer, and, and, and asking God, God, help me to grow through this. There's some areas in your life that you and I both, we need to challenge ourselves in, but don't forsake it. Uh, it the old way hasn't been working for you. God's giving you an opportunity to seek a new way, and that is the actually the old book way is how he's going to want you to go through, uh, to grow through it. So, so submit to God these areas. Submit. Put your flesh to death. And, and, and challenge your spirit and, and grow in the, and be led by the Holy Spirit of God. So we're talking about uh, challenging ourselves, talking about growing through it, um, uh, helping others. And, uh, and then not only that, be a person that, pe that is in true leadership, that people can look to and say, you know what? Um, they, they're out of all that people are losing it, that person is not. Be, be that person in your workplace where they're, they may be terrified, but and, and you may be fearful as well, but you you have a hope in Jesus Christ. There's something different about you and I. I'm telling you, probably today more than ever, people have logged on to Facebook to chime into our services. I think last week we had over 600 views or something like that. We had reached almost over 1,000 people just in, in our Facebook alone. I think it was last week. 
Right, just thinking about that. I mean, good grief. We would have never, even if they were only for a few seconds, they still know that they clicked on that. Uh, people that we may not even, people that may shut the door on our faces out here. But there's people searching. People are questioning. They're wondering, what's going on with all this? What's going to happen when I die? What, what happened? Did we just return? I'm telling you, if they're looking for answers, they're not going to find it on social media in, in the form of, of panic. I'm telling you, I always joke around about it, but there's a lot of truth that, that Twitter is nothing more than a, than a garbage fire. That's all it is, man. And I was just reading it, even some of it this morning, and I had to turn it off because I wasn't trying to intentionally read it. I'm just telling you, if that's where people are getting all their news from, oh... And no wonder people are acting the way they are. We need to have compassion on them because that, that's where they're getting the news from. But I think even sensible people understand that that's not the place. The reality is that there are people in your life that are looking to see, well, it's time to see if the tea in the tea bag here, if it's going to produce that which is inside of it. And believer, for us, be a leader. Step through this by faith. Be strong in it. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Not in your own might, not in your own power, but in God's might. Give it to Him. So before you this week, you have the opportunity to forsake Him and flee, strike Him and go, or deny Him and run. Or we can just bow down and worship the God who knows all things. And submit to him and say, God, just, just give me what I need, Lord. And give me grace. Give me grace to live in it. God wants to do a great work. Are you willing to grow? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to, are you willing to lead? These are those areas. And by the way, because we have to give the, the good part of Peter here. Is that Peter did stand up on the day of Pentecost and preach for the power of God. And people got saved after that. 3,000 were added to the church that day. Many were saved day after day. There's, there's numbers. Commentators, all it says daily were added to the church. Commentators, they, some of them have all types of different numbers. There, it's even said that, that for the days following the day of Pentecost, it was thousands and tens of thousands of people getting saved after that. You tell me, you don't think God wants to do great work at this time? Why? So that none should perish keeping eternity in view. That's really what Peter started looking at. And that's the way we need to look at all of this. Eternity in view. So will you change? Will you grow? Will you challenge yourself? Will you lead? That's what God wants to see this. Have a good week and thankful for you. Let's, let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray that you just bless this, this time now, God, that we challenge ourselves in the word and grow thereby. Pray that you just help us to... Um, to go from here, which you have for us, Lord. Help us not to, even if our reactions haven't been the same, help us to seek forgiveness. Lord, help us to grow from it. Help us, Lord, to get through this uh, together uh, with you in the lead, Father. Help us to help us to focus on our weaknesses and, and then our strengths that we have. Thank you, Lord, for those. But I pray that we glorify God with them and not take them uh, credit for our own. And then, God, not only that, but we pray that you'd help us to be the, the leaders you call us to be. Pray for our men to be leaders to their homes. Pray for our ladies as well to be leaders in the house. And, and God, I pray that uh, we, we don't get lazy, but we get diligent about the work of God. We get diligent about what you're trying to do through this time. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right.